Well, I think it was towards the end of the month of August. That's when that's when Arsenal had to play against a team called um, a team called Brighton. That game ended one one in that encounter where Declan Rice found himself sent off the field of play. The other team that is involved in this encounter that is the northern land derby is tottenham hotspur and they found themselves in a situation of really losing to newcastle by two goals to one and guess what on sunday the north london derby returns as arsenal tries to obviously stretch by the way ever since michael came in through he has gone ahead to put in a very huge stretch and he has found himself really winning very many games because last season he beat them at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where this particular fixture is going to be played and he also went ahead to draw at Emirates to two. The other previous season, he won all the encounters and uh, <clears throat> this season, we are waiting to see how it's really going to go down in these two encounters, in this North London Derby that is going to be played on Sunday. Welcome to our channel and we go by the names of Rokani Media Football and I'm called Rokan David and remember we are powered by Mono Gadgets, dealers in phones that are really brand new and brand new laptops from <clears throat> all over the world, plus used phones and used laptops from the United <clears throat> from the United Kingdom to be specific. So if you feel like you want a used phone, a used laptop, or a brand new phone and brand new laptop, call Mono Gadgets on plus two five six seventy double nine double eight double six five that is mono gadgets for you and the rest is really gonna be history into the making. you can as well go down onto tiktok go to the search bar put in mono gadgets and the rest is really gonna be history and that's what mono gadgets really has for you go ahead and obviously do the needful we thank god for the gift of life the muslims um the muslims we thank allah for the gift of life and let me tell you this <coughs> Manchester united is really doing the due diligence sorry arsenal is really doing the due diligence to obviously get back to winning ways because before they play this game of football <clears throat> man city would have gone ahead to play against brentford you know liverpool i think would have already gone ahead to play also because they are really going to be playing i think on a saturday arsenal is going to be playing on a sunday meaning that if man city happens to win arsenal will come into this game of football with a lot of pressure and you all know to eat that after them playing against after them playing against Manchester, after them playing against Tottenham Hotspur, they are going to be playing against Man City into the Premier League. Not so. I think that's it. Let me check here. Let me check to be really exact. Arsenal, who are you playing next after Tottenham Hotspur? Yeah, after Tottenham Hotspur, they are going to be playing away at Man City. So they are really having two games that they are going to be playing away from home as a side of Arsenal and that is really something tricky for them because if you really lose to Spurs or draw points and draw and you go away at Etihad and don't really win or Man City beats you you see how hard the job really commences to be <clears throat> so Arsenal has to win this game of Spurs to see either obviously get close to man city if man city win they'll be at 12 points and if arsenal wins they'll be at 10 points meaning that at least arsenal will be like we have a chance to come at etihad and beat you because i know arsenal can go that side and really beat them but talking of the injuries at arsenal ricardo carafiori gabriel jesus they are back on the training ground and the manager will need another day to obviously come in and obviously make a very huge assessment about them on whether to start them or not but it looks like they really have high chances to be included into this squad that is going to be traveling to the side of Tottenham Hotspur then <coughs> then we go to the side of um Declan Rice is suspended Tomiyasu not yet back but he's really progressing well Key and Heaney not yet back you can talk about <clears throat> Merino Mikel, not yet back, and Martin Odegaard is also injured. He's not going to be part of this game of football. And Mikel Ateta has going to hit to confirm. Then we go to the side of Spurs. Solanke is really returning. Remember, they played the game of Newcastle without a center forward. And Van der Ven, obviously, they have to assess whether he is really, really fit to play or not. And if it's Besuma, he really got a scare of an injury when he's playing for his team in the African Cup of Nations qualifiers 
for Mali and he needs to be really assessed. The rest of the players are really ready to go. Richardson is also one of those that might surprise us to obviously put in a very huge shift in here altogether. So that is the team news for both teams. But I tell you, however much Arsenal is really having close to four or five players out, I know this is the game they're supposed to win. Now let's go to the probable starting 11 and see what you people have to say about this. Because we all know to eat that Arsenal usually plays with a system of 4-3-3. Not so. The system of Arsenal is a 4-3-3. And let's go to the pitch and see who starts. Winning the save of the month against Aston Villa. It's David Raya in between the stitches, and there is a story I want to bring to you. Aaron Ramsdale has gone ahead to speak on to his departure from the club of Arsenal. You understand? So I'm going to be coming up and obviously bringing you that gist later after this video. On the right, obviously, right back, I think it's going to be Benjamin White, no doubt about that. And um, the computer would have been Tomiyasu and uh, Julian Timba, but I believe Timba is going to be played as a left back into this particular competition into, or into this particular match against Rotterdam Hotspur. Then in the central defense, you'll have Saliba onto the right side of the central defense and um, William Saliba onto the left side. Sorry, Gabriel Magales on the left side of the central defense and Saliba on the right side of the central defense. Now, when you look at that back five, <coughs> I think it's only one player who never took part into the international break, you know, like part represent for his nation. That is Benjamin White. And the reason is he told the England people not to obviously talk to him anymore. He shouldn't be contacted, not until he believes that he will be ready to obviously listen to them. And that means he now has the key to England calling him back. But we all know to it that he has been one of those players that England has always gone ahead to give a consideration. But ever since what happened in Qatar, he fell out with the entire side. And I think, is it Lee Kersley who is really trying to be <clears throat> the sitting coach? He has not gone ahead to convince this guy. And he also knows to it that there is no way he's really going to come up and obviously play under a manager who was the assistant of the manager that was really not in good books with him. So I think when the England national team manager, a new one is announced, I think we'll get the best that we deserve. You know, I think Benjamin White will be really giving a go, but he's really fresh. He has rested for two weeks without playing football and he's really going to be ready for Song Hyun Min because Song Hyun Min plays onto the left attacking side of the midfield for the side of Spurs and the lock horns with Benjamin White. For Julian Timber, he played some good minutes when Germany, sorry, when they're playing against, um, has go, was it called Bosnia and Herzegovina, something of the sort, and um, Germany, he played into that game. Then Gabriel Magales featured for Brazil and Saliba featured up for France, and that was really a very huge. Uh, game of football. So those are the back five and I believe they're really going to be having a very good job and Julian Timber will obviously have a very good job to do to stop Kulseski because Kulseski did limp hand onto that side. Remember in the game of Aston Villa we saw it that Timber was really twisted and turned, you know by by Leon Bailey and at the look of things I think Kulseski is more deadly than Leon Bailey. Now in the central midfield, this is where we are going to see some huge changes as Declan Rice is out. We all know that. And then <coughs> the other player that is out is Odegaard. Declan Rice is suspended because of the record he got when they are playing against Brighton. Then a player known as um, a player known as Odegaard is out because of an ankle injury. Now, into the midfield, obviously, there is a player called Jorginho. I think he's going to be launched into that midfield area to play as a CDM. Then the other player is going to be Thomas Partey. I believe he's going to be taking on the Declan Rice role. He's going to be played as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And you all know to it that he's being played onto the left side of the midfield. That is it. Then on the right, I think Trossard is going to come in and really take over the role 
of Martin Odegaard. That is it. That's how I believe Arsenal is really going to be replacing Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard because out of the 11-man team that played against Brighton, these are the players that are expected to be missing out in action, right? But we all know what it means, obviously, face a side that is really very, very, very rough like this. So, onto the right, onto the right forward, I believe it's going to be Bukayo Saka, right forward. And then on the left, it's really going to be a player called Gabriel Martinelli. And then leading the line is going to be Kai Havertz. So, when you look at that side, for the side of Arsenal, I think it can come into one really hugely compete to take on the side of Tottenham Hotspur. Very good side, and I believe it can really offer better, better, better results into that game. As Trossard really has that brain to obviously find a line-breaking pass. He doesn't do very many touches in the midfield. Jorginho will initiate play, and Pate will put in that hard work into that midfield to obviously face off that midfield of Spurs. And it's all about the tactics of Mikel Arteta that will either let him down into this game or really give him the best that he deserves. But when you look at Spurs, you can talk about their danger men. You know, Song Hyun Myon, Solanke is back. You have to look about him. Gabriel Magales and Saliba have to be on pure watch onto this guy. Then you can talk about um, James Madison, another one that is really deadly through that midfield. Kulseski, you know, Pedro Poro playing off that right back and obviously going ahead to put in those deadly crosses. So Arsenal has to really pay what we call a keen eye onto those players. But I believe that Arsenal really has all stands a better chance to walk away with these three points on the day. Now let's go to the head-to-head -head stats. And they read as follows. Tottenham have lost five of their last seven Premier League, League meetings with Arsenal. One win and one draw. More than, more than they had in their previous 16 against their North London rivals. You get? So Arsenal really has a very huge age on really beating the side of Tottenham Hotspur. Then, secondly, Arsenal have won their last two Premier League games away against Tottenham Hotspur. As many as in the previous 17 such visits, six draws and nine losses. They last won three consecutive away North London derbies between January. Between January 1987 and September 1988. So you, you know how hard this is going to hit to be. And Arsenal is always going to hit to find it hard to beat this side of Tottenham Hotspur at home. And before they beat them last season, there. Arsenal had just gone ahead to really win there, I think in 2000, was it 9? And it had taken close to 15 years. Now, Arsenal came up and obviously beat them. And even last season, they beat them. And we are waiting to see whether Arsenal can go ahead to register that record that they registered way back in 1987 and 1988, where they went ahead to win three consecutive games at the Tottenham Hotspur way back called the White Hart Lane. Thirdly, Arsenal against Spurs is the fixture to have seen the most penalties awarded, 26, and 24 of those have gone ahead to be scored in the Premier League history. Indeed, of all Premier League fixtures, to have seen at least 100 goals scored, the North London Derby has seen the highest percentage netted from the sport, 12%, 12 you know, and last season, if you remember, Arsenal conceded a penalty. You know through who? Through a player called Declan Rice. And that game that ended 2-2, I think Bokayo Saka scored a penalty. Even last season, if you remember the Emirates, the goal that wins, you know, Jesus was taken down, and I think Saka went ahead to take that penalty. So, penalties at the order of the day and don't be shocked if at all a penalty comes in through and we know why a penalty comes in through in such games because of the temper and the level of intensity and tension that this game is really played at fourthly tottenham hotspur arsenal versus spurs has seen both teams score more often than any other fixture in the premier league history 43 goals while sorry 43 times while it's also a fixture 
it's also the fixture to see the team score fast fail to win more often than any other so in this fixture most of the teams that score fast go ahead to lose the game you get so we wait and see whether it will happen but it has gone ahead to see to it that all the 43 encounters they've gonna hit to see goals cross either goal lines lastly tottenham have considered an own goal in each of their last three premier league meetings with arsenal hugo loris in january 2003 remember it was a bukayo saka cross or shot and hugo loris put it in the back of the net cristiano christian romero in september 2023 we all know that and Pierrick Hoiberg in April 2004, 2024 you know this game was really played in April and it ended 3-2 in favor of Arsenal no team has ever put through their own net in four consecutive meetings with an opposite sorry with an opponent in the competition before so wait to see whether an own goal really goes in if at all you see it going in during that encounter you'll obviously tell me or you'll obviously or it obviously come to your mind that they've gonna hate to do it four times in a row because they've gonna hate to be doing it game in game out so that is it and we wait to see how things are really gonna pan out but i anticipate that Arsenal is gonna win this game of football by two goals to one i believe Arsenal is really gonna win it and if at all they defend better they can even keep a clean sheet but we cannot really rule out spurs because they might really look at this as a turning point and it might it it might act as a springboard because Spurs hasn't gone ahead to have a very good season as you look to them when you look at their Premier League fixtures Spurs Spurs played their first game and um, this season in the Premier League and um, they drew with Leicester 1-1 they beat Everton for nil and they lost to Newcastle to one meaning that they've played three games and they've gone ahead to obviously lose two and they've won one and this is gonna be another fixture that they are playing from home and what should be the worrying note of arsenal the only game that spurs have gone ahead to play at home they've gone ahead to win it they beat everton by four goals to nil and one will tell me rokani arsenal is not everton you understand it can do better and better and better than that so my prediction is to one in favor of arsenal and um Spurs will have to do a lot if they to beat Arsenal, but don't rule out Spurs coming in through obviously be the side of Arsenal. But I see an Arsenal win all over this because the manager Mikel is going to really field players that are really hungry to prove him that we deserve to get into the starting eleven, like Trossard, uh, Jorginho. You understand? And Jesus might obviously surprise us with a start, you know, leading that line and maybe dropping Kai Havertz into the midfield. You never know what is what the manager is really going to be having as his plan. He might say let me drop kai havertz in the midfield and let me start jesus and trossard into the mix so all that is possible but any plan that is going to be coming up with i think he can really come in through and stop the side of spurs from really getting to where they really want to be so your predictions are welcome in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see it that everything really moves on as planned and this is the Rokani Media Football, powered by Mono Gadgets dealers in phones that are really brand new and brand new laptops. And even if you want to use phones and use laptops, not from Uganda, but from the United Kingdom, call them on plus two five six seventy double nine double eight double six five, and search them on TikTok, Mono Gadgets, and you'll thank me later. So guys, we out for now. See you later. Rokan David is my name, and hope you guys are really having the best of the best and let's meet in the next one or two hours as we bring you more news about your different clubs in here but your reactions are welcome i'm waiting for your reactions into the comment section below i'm sorry the capacity of oh, the capacity is 62,850. that is it so bye bye see you when you see me